All right, welcome to your True Real Estate 911 weekly update with your local real estate pro, Lisa True. And uh, this week we have somebody special. In fact, uh, they were in our area not too terribly long ago at the World Leaders Conference, the, the great annual event uh, we have here at the uh, Palm Beach County Convention Center. It's John Gordon. He's a, a best-selling author, a keynote speaker. And there are a couple of things, uh, Lisa, that really stood out to you when you had some recent dealings. If you want to share a little bit about uh, your experience, your thoughts uh, regarding John and his work, and why you wanted him to join us on today's show. Well, we've been uh, following um, John's books since the Energy Bus came out, and uh, it's a book that our team reads every single year. It's a great reminder about um, you know how we can change based on our perspective and based on the way we look at things, um, the results that we get, and also the impact that we have uh, with others that we come in contact with. So we've read them all. Um, you know, we have, of course, uh, team favorites, and yet there's not really one that I, I don't say I love. And so I just wanted to share, we have uh, the, the new book coming out, and um, you know, I wanted to bring John on and talk about it. And I'm getting constant questions about what should I be reading and how do we have a positive impact in our businesses. So I thought it was a perfect timing. And that's what I was going to mention, Lisa. The one thing that uh, I've noticed about you is you, some people um, you know, do adhere to the philosophy that you're moving one of two directions. And you're certainly of the mindset that if you're not improving, you are falling behind, which I respect the most successful people, especially those that operate at the very top of their industries. They do adhere to that type of mindset. And uh, with that in mind, you are constantly trying to better yourself. You are trying to remain positive. And, uh, you know, John in particular, you'd mentioned that his work in the, in the frame of thinking that you've derived from his work has really been constructive in your day-to-day -day life. Well, it has. And it's not just about improving myself. It's about improving those that I come into contact with. Um, when I bring somebody into our business, into our team, I make a promise to them to give them opportunity, but also to improve their life. And we do things uh, like read books together and discuss great books um, as, as a fulfillment of the promise I've made to them. And then there's great real estate agents that are listening today that, um, you know, great business owners that are listening today. And they're often reaching out to me saying, you're so positive. How do you do that? And it's really about feeding my mind constantly with great books. And also, because we read so much and we work so hard, I want to enjoy the book as I'm reading it. And that's why the team constantly comes back to John's books, because it's not a manual. It's actually a story. It's something that we can enjoy through learning lessons as well. So you don't feel like you're actually just applying yourself constantly. You're really enjoying the process, which I think is is really nice. And uh, as we get going uh, on today's show, I want to remind you that if you're interested in real estate, visit the True's website. It's truerealestate911.com, truerealestate911.com. You can search like a real estate agent there for free. All of the great resources, including more information about John and his materials as well. And also, if you'd like to reach out to the True Group, buying, selling, questions, uh, seven days a week. They're there for you. 561-972-8326. 972-8326. And uh, now we'll bring John Gordon in. Uh, in and John, your background, it's interesting because you have a background in, in teaching. Did you always know that you wanted to be uh, someone who would be a motivator? It, 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 was that always where your, your direction was taking you? Not at all. In, in college at Cornell University, I was I was a government economics major. I wanted to go into politics. I interned in D.C. on Capitol Hill. I'm sorry? I ran for City Council of Atlanta when I was 26 years old. Wow. I went door to door to 7,000 houses. I almost, I almost won the election, but when I lost, I was devastated. I thought my life was over, but now I look back and I realize sometimes you have to lose a goal to find your destiny. So instead of dealing with potholes and, and road signs, I'm dealing with something I love to do and, and inspiring people. And, and uh, there's nothing I enjoy more than doing this work. So, so I'm just thankful I get to do this because it really is my passion. Well, John, being familiar with Atlanta politics and certainly all of us familiar with what goes on in D.C., um, I, I have no doubt that uh, to, to remain positive and to be a positive influence, you probably chose a, a better path for, your, <laughs> for yourself and the people you've been able to help over the course of time. Things always seem to work out for a reason. Tell us a little bit. Your new book is The Carpenter. Tell us the background um, about why you wrote this book and a little bit about the experience and what we can derive from it. Well, it was during the Great 
recession, and we had a carpenter at the house doing some work. And I, rem- I remember I asked him how he was doing, how his business was. I was expecting him to say it was, it was horrible, you know, my business is suffering, but that's not what he said. He said, I'm doing great. I'm busier than I've ever been. Wow. And it hit me. He was great at, at his work. He cared about the work that he did. He cared about his clients. Everyone referred him. And sure, there were a lot of average carpenters during that time that weren't doing well, but he was thriving. And it was like that in, in every industry during the Great Recession. If you were good, if you pursued excellence, if you were a craftsman instead of a carpenter, you were successful. And so I started to think about what are the key strategies that cause us to stand out in the marketplace, in the work that we do. And, and it started with care, that they care more. They care about everything and everyone. They care about the details. They put their heart and their soul into the work that they do. And when you care, you stand out in a world where most don't care. And so that was really the genesis of it. Now, more principles and more strategies evolved as I started writing the book, and then it became what, what it is you know, now as it releases today. Lisa, it's interesting hearing John speak about that experience with the carpenter during the Great Recession actually reminded me of you uh, because I remember one of the things you were saying during the midst of the housing crisis when you were growing your business year after year after year in the midst of the housing crisis in Palm Beach County, you kept saying, "If you yes, things are bad if you choose to participate. We don't choose to participate. And in a time of real chaos, you are finding solutions for the homeowners that you were working with during an unprecedented period of time in real estate. I, I think it was a, a amazing opportunity uh, for at least for our business and our family because what we realized it started with like you said care um, and and then we were just we had such a determination that um, if you really um, wanted to help people that were struggling and suffering we weren't gonna just give up like we were we weren't gonna give up on them and we weren't gonna give up on the solutions and. Um, I think that that determination and that, but it comes back to being committed to people because it's too hard if you don't have a a big enough reason why you're prepared to do something. And it has always been about our clients for us, bringing it back to our clients. And as we're growing our business, it also is about um, our team members because I, Steve and I really, um, we make promises and commitments to our team members and that means something to us. So, John, you work with a lot of elite organizations, whether you're talking about my beloved Atlanta Falcons or, you know, Campbell's, Wells Fargo, State Farm, uh, just to name some of the folks. And what is it that you find in particular about uh, the businesses that operate efficiently and well, regardless of what the economy is doing, what their industry are doing, and uh, and, and those that do struggle? Well, Lisa demonstrates those characteristics. I mean, she was thriving during during the downturn because she had great leadership. Leadership is everything. You have to have leadership that stands on, on principles. What do you believe? How do you show up every day? How do you do things? What do you stand for? And so once you know what you stand for, every decision you make is easy. That, that leads us to culture. Great leaders build great cultures. And so I find that the companies and the organizations that have great cultures have sustained success through good economies and bad economies. And it's the culture that drives behavior. Behavior drives habits, and habits ultimately create the future. So it's culture, and it's leadership, and then it's a culture of caring, serving, and loving. I call it love, serve, care. You love what you do, you serve people, and and you care about them. I mean, the realtors who were thriving during the downturn, there were a lot of people who quit. There were a lot of people who gave up. There were a lot of people who just said, you know what, I can't do this. There were those who said, you know what, this is my business. I'm about serving my clients. I'm here to participate in this economy no matter what it is. I'm here to continue to do my job and serve others. Those who had that mindset, those who still improved, who had a desire to get better, continued to to grow and thrive during that change, and then they came out of it even stronger, whereas the other people just gave up. So it really is about the principled leadership and the culture we build. You know, we're interesting creatures, John. You would know more than most based upon the number of people you've worked worked with at various different levels and, and studied it as well. It's easier to be negative, seemingly, than it is to be positive. So for the people who, who say, oh, it's easy for you to say that we should just be positive, 
is there something that we can do if we do find ourselves, you know, in that tendency of getting in a rut or embracing the negative uh, when there, when we don't necessarily have to? There are things we can do in our everyday life to try to keep us from that place and, and remain in a positive frame of mind. Sure. Well, like like most people, I'm not naturally a positive person. If you're naturally positive, it's actually easier to be positive. If you're naturally more towards the negative, it's easier to be negative. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself being negative, you got to feed what I call that positive dog. We have that choice every day to feed the negative or the positive dog inside of us. And whichever one we feed, that is what grows. The best advice I ever heard was from Dr. James Gills, the only person on the planet to complete six double Ironman triathlons. And last time I, he did it, he was 59 years old. Wow. So I said, I said, how did you do it? He said, it was simple, really. I've learned to talk to myself instead of listen to myself. If I listen to myself, I hear all the negative, all the fear, all the doubt, all the complaints. But if I talk to myself, I can feed myself with the words and the encouragement that I need to keep on moving forward. And it's really that simple. What are we saying to ourselves? What are we feeding ourselves? What is our perspective? Is it a challenge or an opportunity? Is it a loss or a learning opportunity to stay strong? And how we see the world ultimately determines the world that we see. Well, that sounds like a a statement that is brilliant in its simplicity. And if we pay attention to it, its application as well, that we should talk to ourselves instead of listen to ourselves. And it's interesting, Lisa, because I, I think we all have found ourselves in this situation, right, to where maybe you're laying down in bed and what do you, you can go a couple of different directions. You can either think about something that, that's positive to set you up well for the next day or you can sit there and worry about all the things that could go wrong. This was uh, probably the, I mean, there were a lot of great things in this book, but this was one of the key things that I thought um, was so simple and yet people don't do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that a lot of us aren't even aware of what we're, what's going on in our head. You know, the conversations that we have, I, I don't think that we're as aware of them. And, you know, if you can change one thing, I think this is it. Um, I start my morning every day doing affirmations and I have those affirmations because you know I believe that you can't control the first thought but you can control the second I'm not responsible that first thought that pops in your head you know it, it, we have a subconscious mind so it's going to happen and yet we need to be able to have things that will get us thinking positively so I have four or five things that you know, I can say if I get that thought that can turn it all around. So I thought this, I thought it was brilliant. It, it's, it's truly, I think, something that would change um, really the lives of many people if they just do that one thing. It's brilliant, and, um, you know, I wish I came up with it, but I'm glad, <laughs> that, that, I'm glad Dr. James Gills taught me it. You know, it's, uh, it's funny because uh, <laughs> when you're talking about perpetuating somebody else's message, um, it, sometimes that is the most important thing. It is to keep the, the positive flow of information going. You know, I, I think about the, the way we will structure our day. So often we end up structuring things around our problems rather than around the things that we have the best control over. Share with us, if you would, John, one of your best success stories for somebody who really was having a, a difficult time in their own lives and, and maybe in their business and how they were able to turn it around. Well, one of my favorites is a UPS in the Northwest region. I mean, the president, Nancy Kepper of the Northwest region, gave out the energy bus to her, her thousand leaders who then rolled it out to their 12,000 employees and drivers. Wow. And just by focusing on positivity by getting rid of the negativity and dealing with it, better communication, more positive communication, more relationship focus on having a better relationship between managers and drivers, and just really focusing on positive interactions, encouragement, and so forth, they saw a, an increase in morale, engagement, performance, and a decrease in absenteeism. So it was the first time I had a company that said, hey, we're going to measure this, we're going to see how this works. And it was exciting to see. But you know, the truth be told, I get emails all the time from different organizations and companies and worked with a number of sports teams. I mean, Damian Lillard, the NBA Rookie of the Year last year, he read my book Training Camp before his NBA rookie season. And he wow. said he read it twice to get his mind around how hard he would have to work to make it in the NBA in order to be his best. So just emails like that and, and, and calls like that, really inspire me to keep on sharing the message because because we know it works.
And I, I love, I mean, I follow John on, on Facebook, and I love that he is also reaching out to our youth because what a great message if they if every, you know, middle-aged child, and of course, you know, he has books for children. I think if, you know, the sooner we can start this messaging, the easier it is naturally instead of waiting till someone is an adult and has all this extra stuff to overcome. I think, you know, if you have kids, get them the books now. And Lisa, you know, one of the things that uh, John mentioned there as well, that was part of the success story with uh, the UPS example is something that I've seen you do. In fact, you've even done it with Ashley and me. Uh, and, and that is you'll take a you know book or you'll take a particular message and you will share it. You don't just use it for your own benefit, but you also perpetuate it. And, uh, you know, I've always thought there's a lot of wisdom in it because not only at that point um, are you... Uh, passing along something that could be positive. But I also think there is reinforcement for yourself in that when you're keeping that message active and sharing it with others uh, so that you don't lose focus of it once you've taken it in. I think the best way to, to learn something is to teach it. And so um, we do a, I do a, a video uh, twice a month that is really for business owners and real estate agents to train and give back a little bit. I've had a lot of people in my life that have, have he helped us and shared with us. And I always share the books I'm reading because I get that question all the time. What are you reading? What are you, because I read a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. What books are you recommending? And I'm always sharing that information because um, we've been fortunate to have a lot of people in our lives help us along. And so it is a, a, a way of giving back um, as well as if, you know, which is the question I had for John. One of the, the principles is uh, small minds can't understand big dreams. So if I can help someone expand their positive side and their mindset, it'll, it, it, you know, then the people around me are more positive, which obviously benefits them and benefits me as well. So I'm really not, I, I'd like John to maybe share, like, what can you do when others around you that are important in your life don't understand your dreams? And how can you still fulfill kind of where you're going in, in on your journey? Sure. Well, that's, you know, that quote is so important because not everyone is going to share your vision. Not everyone is going to see what you see and, and share your belief. And so you just need to keep on driving, as I talk about in the energy bus, keep on moving forward, keep on staying positive, keep on making a difference. Let your life that would be, be your greatest demonstration. You don't have to talk it, but when you live it, other people will take notice. And I think that's the most powerful thing you can do is just to live it. Like in the carpenter, right? Love, serve, care. When we do those three things, love, serve, and care, People notice, and they'll say there's something different about Lisa. There's something different about that person. They'll want what you have. They'll want the success that you have. They'll want the fruit that you have. And you'll tell them, hey, if you want the fruit, you have to nurture the root. If you want to have a great finished product, you have to be a craftsman who devotes countless hours and years and sweat and tears of hard work, passion, heart and soul into creating something. And then you'll say, if you can do it too. Anyone can if they're willing to do it. So I really believe that the best thing to do is to, to live it, share books like mine and others with people. I read a weekly positive tip. It's free. A lot of people share that with others. We have to shift their perspective with, with different material. With my kids, you know, they don't want to hear what I have to say or read what I write. So, <laughs> you know, there's, they're still teenagers, right? So, I mean, they'll read my books, but, you know, they, I'm their dad, right? So I actually find biographies and great examples of, of the messages I want to reinforce, and I'll share that with my son. He plays tennis. I found a great article of one of the top tennis players who had to overcome all sorts of adversity and how he did it, printed it out read it to him. You know, we have a family meeting once a week, and I did that. And so I think it's important to share these kind of stories and, and principles with others that way. Great information. I really appreciate you taking the time. The new book, it's The Carpenter, John Gordon, and of course, all of your books, The Energy Bus. It, by the way, is there any order to, to your books, or can people kind of do them a la carte at this point? Oh, people can do a mala card, but I always think they should start with the energy bus. I think it all begins there. It's the first book I wrote, and then everything else flows from there. So I would start with the energy bus, and after that, you can pretty much uh, pick whatever you, whatever one you want to pick. All right. So, so John, maybe if you could just share quickly how they can get the book um, or where they can go to uh, find out more information about it. Oh, sure. Thanks, Lisa. So they can go to carpenter11.com. That's carpenter11.com, and 
you can also go to my website, johngordon.com, J-O-N, gordon.com. We have all the books on there. And we don't sell books directly, but we have links to various booksellers where you can buy them, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, you name it. We'll have them available, those, those links available. And I think that Amazon's running a, a really good pricing on it uh, today. They so. are, 50% off. So it's 11.50 right now where the normal price is, is $23. So that's pretty exciting that they're doing that. I have no control over that as an author, but when I see my books that low, I, I want people to know about it because, you know, as an author, I just really want people to read it. I don't care where they get the book, whether it's Amazon, whether it's the library. I have some people that say, hey, John, I didn't buy your book, but I read the library. I said, that's okay. As long as you're reading it, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if they want a copy, yeah, the best price right now is Amazon, uh, 1150 All right. That's uh, great stuff. Appreciate it. The Carpenter, uh, you pick up a copy. Lisa, I still have some learning to do, um, and, and maybe uh, maybe the carpenter will help me out. You start your day with positive affirmations. I just start my day with a lot of coffee, and then back it up with even more. And and John, counting on you, buddy. You got to be in the locker room before every game this year. We cannot have another season like last year. I'll be there at the end of July. Hopefully, that will stick. <laughs> All right, very good. All right, John Gordon, appreciate it. Lisa, some terrific information from John on today's show. And if we are thinking about real estate and uh, we're in that mood and interested in buying specifically, you have a few properties you wanted to highlight that are really good opportunities right now. We have a four-bedroom, four-bath luxury home located in Iron Horse. This property has 4,500 air-conditioned square feet, an amazing location on the preserve, has a pool. It's just a really great house, and it's on the market for 875000 now, the second, if you love boating, this is for you. Uh, this is a two-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath in North Palm. Ocean access, amazing dock, a backyard that you're going to love with a pool and a spa. It's been completely renovated, and it's on the market for 550 And the third is a brand-new listing. This is probably going to go this weekend, so call right away. It's a four-bedroom, three-bath, three-car garage. It's located in uh, Greenwood Manor. And it's on the market for 350000 That's the lowest price in the community. So if you're interested in any of those properties, or if you have any questions, True Group, they're happy to help you seven days a week. 561-972-8326. 561-972-8326. Also remember, you can always get started at truerealestate911.com. Truerealestate911.com. And tune in about 818 every Wednesday morning as Lisa provides you with the midweek update. Keep you ahead of the curve in local real estate.